Well, here at GoS, we've been looking at a whole variety of uh, aircraft and talking really what are our skies going to look like in the next 10, 15 years or so. And to tell us more about what's going on at Joby Aviation, I have their policy and government affairs lead at Joby Aviation, Max Fenkel. Now, Max, tell us a little bit about what we expect to see in the skies really over the next few years and what's happened over the last, say, two or three years that's really pushed innovation on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're so happy to be here at Farnborough today to talk about this. And I think from the Joby perspective, we're building an all-electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, um, or an eVTOL as we've talked about for today. And so from the Joby perspective, over the past few years, we've really been working hard on the designing and working with the FAA and regulators around the world on the certification of our aircraft. We're on track to be commercially operational in 2024. And what that means is that it, around that time when we launch in the cities we we launch in, that we'll be able to bring a quiet, accessible, affordable form of air travel to them in really ways that haven't been done before. So for example, with our air, with our airplane, you'll be able to take off vertically, transition onto the wing and cruise like an airplane, and then come in and land vertically as well. All of that will be done through one press of a button in an app, and then at an affordable price point so that it is truthfully creating a new democratized form of air travel. Which I think is pretty crucial, uh, crucial isn't it? Because we talk about sustainability and, and how we're going to keep these things going with affordability as well. But that has to be crucial because people have to be able to afford the price point to make it financially viable for years to come. Yeah, absolutely. So electric's amazing in so many different ways. And one of which is that it creates zero operating emissions. We have to worry about the life cycle and we have ways that we're looking at to do that. But then the affordability as well. And so with an electric system, the operating cost comes way down as well as the maintenance cost. And so if you look at the design of the aircraft, it's very different than a traditional combustion engine design. It's more analogous to how an electric vehicle in the automobile world is designed versus a traditional car. And so the maintenance comes down as well. So what happens is to the consumer, the cost comes down as well. So we're excited to say that we're going to launch at around $3 per passenger mile, which is on par with Uber black prices. And then over time, be able to scale that with the system down to be cheaper and on, eventually on par with surface transportation. So if we look to the future, say the next 10, 15 years or so, and we move away from manned or piloted crewed aircraft to unmanned. Where do you see this going eventually? Yeah, it's a great question. So from the Joby perspective, we're building a piloted airplane. And so we always see that we've designed our airplane for today's regulatory system. I think we're definitely looking at what's to come in the future and we understand that autonomy. And there's some amazing research being done in the UK, back in the US um, on what that looks like. But from our perspective, we're really focused on that, uh, that first aircraft that will get over the finish line to be type certified. And for us, that'll be a piloted airplane with four passenger seats. Oh, okay. And what about infrastructure itself? I mean, I know we're talking a lot at the moment of using current helipads and helicopter infrastructure, but what's this going to look like as we move forward as well? Yeah, it's a, it's a very good question. There's actually a lot of work currently going on with regulators around the world on that. So if we take a step back right now, there's a lot of general aviation and, and, and airfields in the U.S. and the U.K. In the U.S., there's about 5,080 general aviation airports and then a lot of helipads. In the U.K., there's a, a very large number as well. I think the number is somewhere around 2,000 in there. And so what that means on day one, we have a lot of really good infrastructure for our airplanes to get off the ground and carry passengers. Over time, because of the, the noise profile, which we can talk about in a second of these aircraft, we think we're going to be able to permit infrastructure closer where people want to live and work because it's going to be an accessible service that people are going to want. And what that means is that we're going to need some new infrastructure. The term of art right now is vertiport or skyport. And so the FAA just this week actually released a um, drafting engineering brief for what a vertiport should look like. EAS is working through some vertiport guidance as well. And by this summer, hopefully coming out of the regulators, we'll know what the standards are we need to permit to. And then we'll be able to come in and work with cities and states and localities to say, okay, here are the standards we want. Here are some sites we want to look at. How do we go about permitting this so that it is truthfully a service that's closer to where people want to live and work? And when it comes to what about regulation, and regulation is something that's always changing, it's always evolving. Uh, it's something that can hold you back, but it can also give you the tools, I suppose, to move forward. Do you see the regulation change as a hindrance or as, as something that you have to just embrace? Yeah, absolutely. So I think from I can speak from the Joby perspective. And when we designed your airplane, we did it really intentionally to to fit in today's regulatory system. And so what that means is that our airplane is being certified by the FAA as a Part 23 airplane, which um, came in in a uh, quote unquote Part 23 rewrite back a, a few years back. And so when you start with the basis of we are something that exists today versus going to create a fully new thing, it means you have a clear path to operations. From an airspace side, we're using commercial aviation pilots, flying, um, flying VFR and IFR routes. And so when you start to piece back the layers of this, it really t looks, touches, and feels exactly like what's happening today. It just might be done with a different propulsion type. 
Oh, I see. It's a fascinating future that we've got, and uh, hopefully we can find out more as the years to come. But Max, thank you very much indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you.